As an ecologist, I'm particularly um, concerned with various uh, tremendously uh, sad events unfolding around as the last of the great forests are being clear-cut, as so many of the wild rivers are being dammed up. The once wild rivers, there are very few left that flow wild and free and still make it to the sea. And yet many of my brothers and sisters within the broad ecological or environmental movement speak as though they wish to aim ourselves, our culture, at a, a, a better future in 50 years or in 200 years. But for me, this is, this is really kind of goofy because um, that way of aiming at the future still holds one in the grip of linear time. It holds one in the grip of the same um, delusion that cuts us off from the very world that we share with the snakes and the aspen groves and the owl hunkered down on a branch of the cottonwood does not live in that linear projecting toward a future. So where many of my colleagues uh, think we should try to get to a better future, I think my sense is that we should be trying to become ever more deeply of the presence of the present that where we need to try to get to is right here. This very world that we share with the other animals and the plants and the gusting winds and the mountains, the rocks. So it's never just human. The present moment is always made of many things that are not human. Even here in this room where you're interviewing me uh, up on the seventh or eighth floor of, of, of a tall building in a city, um, but we're still breathing air that is breathed out by all the green and growing folks outside this hotel. Um, and if I, if I jump up from the ground here, I, um, I instantly come back down to the ground, which is to say I'm still under the influence of, of gravity this amazing um, rapport um, or eros between my body and the body of the earth uh, that holds us all in its influence. And that too is much more than human. Um, the ground and the attraction between my body and the ground. Um, the attraction of the earth for my flesh and my flesh for the earth. Um, is also part and parcel of the present moment. So, to me, it's only in the living present, the open present, the expansive presence of the present, the eternal present, that we live with the whole of our bodies, our animal bodies, our senses awake. The past is what is hidden under the ground of this moment. It's what has sedimented in layers over epochs and eons into a solid ground that we can walk upon. But if we want to know what happened in the past in the landscape where we find ourselves, well, we might dig down, dig a soil pit, and look at the layers of soil under the ground to see what happened at various depths in the past. But of course there's also a, a closer past, um, more recent uh, past, which is not just under the ground, but it's inside anything around us, inside a tree. We might core the tree to look at the layers within the tree and where there's a thicker layer of wood, we know that there was abundant moisture that year, and the tree grew more thickly eight years ago. So we can find the past always inside our own body as well. 
as well as the deep past inside the earth, under the ground. Just as the future waits beyond the horizon, but the, the near future waits just behind that tree from whence a spider might come crawling into view at any moment, crawling into the present. So the future, in a sense, also waits just behind any stone, any rock, any nearby hill. Um, there's always that aspect of things, the other side of things that we don't see directly. That's the openness of the future. It's right here. It's part of our bodily world, which is to say, it's part of the space, the spatial surroundings. Um, so I don't understand the uh, separation of, of time from space. It seems to me that space is already temporal, that space rightly felt if we were to notice the, the world as our animal bodies really experience it, we would realize that um, time as a separated dimension does not exist. And what we two-leggeds who have become so abstract and live in our heads in these goofy abstract concepts, what we might try and do is take this abstraction called linear time and dissolve it back into the space that surrounds us. And if we were to bleed time back into space, then space itself transforms into place, into this breathing, rhythmic, pulsing presence where we sit or stand or find ourselves walking, each entity with its own pulse, its own interior animation, whether it be an animal, whether it be a clump of grass, whether it be a boulder. Each spatial thing then has its own dynamism, its own life. Everything is alive through and through. Matter itself breathe. That's, um, that I believe is our birthright as animals, as human animals, is to experience and know that we are alive inside a world that is itself alive. And um, as long as we think of time as something separate from space, then we stay hidden from that experience and we hide ourselves from the direct encounter with the actual earth that is our larger body. It's a big breathing space that surrounds us on every hand, stretching out all the way to the horizon in front of me and to the horizon behind me and arcing overhead in the sky as the sun sort of makes its daily journey through the blue. But the present moment, the world to which I am present with all of my senses just now, is the local terrain where I find myself at this moment, along with encounters with other animals met in the depths of the forest and your eyes lock when you unexpectedly encounter this other being who's gazing you as you're gazing it and something seems to pass out of my right eye into its left eye and out of its right eye into my left eye and it's almost as if a kind of circuit is set up and then it bounds off into the woods and I don't know what just happened except I'm changed. Something is different now. Uh, something was exchanged. And it's only in the presence of the present moment that we meet another person or another animal. 
or another being face to face and have a real encounter with the strangeness of another being that happens always in the present in the present to come deeply into relationship with one another and with our world necessitates that we drop inside of time into the thick of the sensuous present the hidden depth of of the present moment this present landscape where i live uh, the future in a sense is is what waits beyond the horizon of this open eternity The only thing I would add is to thank SEED for sponsoring these dialogues that we've had in Albuquerque for the past number of years now and encourage them to continue with them because they're really excellent forums for knowledge exchange and intellectual nurturing and so forth. And they have just been very good therapy for people who do participate in the dialogue. So I want to thank Seed for being a sponsor and carrying that tradition on.